hello and welcome back i'm sorry i haven't been uploading any videos recently i just took on a new job so things were hectic okay so today's video is about face areas so as you can see we have a floor here and it's consistent of many faces so what we want is to extract the area value of these faces and paste it as a text node so without further ado let's get it going <music> First, I'm gonna be starting the process like I did uh, at work. So I'll go to Revit API Docs. Okay, so first we go to Selection because we're gonna be selecting this. So I know that the user is gonna be selecting this face. It's not gonna be some kind of filter. So I know the user will actually choose this uh, face and this one or this one, God knows, whatever. So go here and let's type in selection class okay so we have the public class selection i disposable now now what i do is actually go uh, a lot of times you will find examples in the revit api docs so as you can see here um, ui document ui doc common dot application active ui document now this is going to be already loaded if you're using jeremy's uh, template in visual studio so selection. So as you can see here, here he defines the class and then gives the name uh, UI doc dot selection, and he is getting an i collection. An i collection is something like a list uh, and of element IDs. Uh, an i collection is actually, I guess, a super class of uh, lists. So it shares some uh, attributes, of some methods with lists. But it's more general. Uh, and an I collection of element IDs called selected IDs, UI doc, the selection, get element IDs. Okay, now we have some understanding of how selection works. Let's dig deeper. So here we have selection methods. Okay, now we can dispose, get element IDs, pick box. A pick box is something, this pick box and pick object yeah that's the one we want okay as you can see we have four types you can just pick the object and define the object type uh, you can define the object type and uh, define the filter you can object type and the string and an object type a selection filter and the string as well so mm, let's choose this one okay so we're getting a reference pick object object type okay well what the hell is an object type so i'm gonna be clicking here okay now we can see what is an object type okay we have nothing returns nothing uh, face okay so we have a face now we need to see if this face has any parameter or method or properties returning the area value so let's make a quick search for the face okay and now as you can see we have an area parameter or an area property. So let's jump back into Visual Studio and start coding. Okay, and we're back into Visual Studio. So this is actually the Jeremy's uh, template. Now I've already fixed, uh, changed the GUID numbers in the add-in and in the reference and added the API and the API UI. If you wanna see how I did that, you can check one of my earlier videos. Okay, so here we can see the selection that we saw in the Revit API docs used as a selection cell equals UI doc dot selection. Now we're going to be using something a bit differently. So, well, we're again not going to be needing this. So we can delete all that. We don't need filter. Okay. And we're not going to be using this. We're going to be using a reference why we're going to be and we're going to be using a reference why are we going to be using a reference well let's go back to the pick object and as we can see the pick object method returns a reference i'm going to be typing reference with a big r as you can see this reference i'm going to be automatically suggest a name for it reference ui doc selection dot pick object now if i hover my mouse over this here i can see object type you can choose an i selection uh, filter and a string 
and has three open modes. Now, if I click on this, so as you can see, this is all of the possible ways you can create a big object reference, uh, all loaded to, through the Revit API and the Revit API UI. So I'm going to be using big object, object type dot face. Now I can create a string. Awesome. Okay, now we have a reference, but what we need to do actually is to convert this reference somehow into a face. So face is actually a geometry object. Now, uh, in most cases, you're going to be Googling a lot and you're going to be searching a lot. So um, let's say get geometry, because here you can see how we can get this geometry from the reference. So you have all of these members, methods and properties but we actually need some way to convert it. So let's type get geometry. Now I know this method, so I know it's actually, uh, I know that it actually exists, but uh, I actually figured it out just by Googling and uh, stumbling into the Revit API forms on Autodesk. And I saw somebody use it there and it gave me the idea. So here we can see the geometry object get geometry object from reference and reference. So what we're going to be doing is doing just that. So jumping back into Visual Studio. So first we're going to be defining geometry object. Let's call it geo object. First this gonna get the element because it's actually an element. If we scroll up, we can see it's actually an element. The easiest way to get an element is just doc, which means active document, dot get element. Now you can hear either type the element ID or the reference. So I'm gonna be typing the reference. And then get geometry object from reference. And once again, I'm gonna pass the reference here okay oops okay now we're going to be declaring face uh visual studio will suggest the name face just with an lowercase f i'm going to be typing geo object as face oops okay so not the lowercase f uh face just like this. Okay, now we have successfully uh, transformed the reference from a selection to a reference and a geo uh, object and then a geo object to a face. Now we're going to be getting uh, the area. So the area is represented in a double. So I'm going to be creating double called area. It's going to be face dot area. Now, if you're using feet, uh, square feet, you don't need to do anything, but I honestly want to retrieve this in uh, square meters. I'm going to be multiplying by, okay. I'm going to be converting this into a string because I want to actually paste it as a text annotation. So string area string equals area to string. And I'm going to be typing this because I want to round this out to only two decimal points. Okay, now to actually create a text note annotation, we're going to be creating something called a text note option. So what I did is var text note uh, option, new text note option. So the horizontal alignment is centered, the vertical alignment is middle, and the type ID which is this one right here, it's going to choose the default. Okay, now we're going to go into the transaction. So you can change the transaction name to placing face area as a text. So first we're going to be creating a sketch plane so we can actually um, place text nodes because you can't uh, place text nodes in 3D views. So a good thing to always uh, create a sketch plane. So to create a sketch plane is not really that uh, difficult. Sketch plane, create doc plane, create by normal and erosion. And we're going to be taking the active view uh, view direction, the active view origin. So actually creating a sketch plane on the active view. And then doc dot active 
view dot sketch plane equals sp oops s oh not sp sp now you can leave it as is but it's a mistake so i'm gonna be re correcting that and then uh yeah i want uh, for the user to actually select the point of the insertion so select the point where the text actually begins so i'm gonna be creating an xyz so xyz is simply an uh, a point in the model so i'm gonna be calling it p1 and ui dog dot selection dot pick point now if i go back to selection class you can see here the pick point method as you can see the pick point method returns an xyz that's why i choose xyz no. variable text node uh, text node dot create and as you can see this uh, uh, all of what is required so you require to supply the document which is doc which is the active uh, document and the element id of the view id and the xyz position and the string of the text and the text node options okay after all of this i guess we're good to go now let me save this and click start so i've launched revit we go to add-ins we go to external tools and choose the command da face area so first we're going to be selecting a face and then we're going to be selecting uh, a point where we want the text to start and 155 meters i hope you enjoyed this video now if you have any suggestions you can type them in the comments and if you like this video and want to see more hit the like and subscribe button